Women Innovators. Interviews with women with big messages and big missions, sharing their stories to inspire you to live your passion and step up to make the world a better place. Here's your host, Tammy Patzer. Hi, this is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really excited to introduce today's guest, Marty Ward. Using her experience as a teacher, school-based social worker, and now a transformational strategist for entrepreneurs, Marty L. Ward, founder of the 501c3 Confidence Eliminates Bullying Incorporated, uses game-changing strategies to eliminate the impact of bullying on our children. Realizing that we can't stop the bullying from saying or doing whatever they want, Marty focuses on creating confident kids who believe in themselves rather than believe the mean words of the bully. Everyone, including the bully, becomes confident and confidence boosters who encourage each other rather than fault finders who put each other down. Marty's customized training programs for teachers, parents, grandparents, students, school districts, and organizations reduce discipline problems and childhood suicides while increasing school attendance, self-confidence, and getting more cooperation at home as well as at school. To contact Marty L. Ward for teacher training, behavior management from the inside out, five strategies to eliminate bullying, dynamic school assembly, or classroom presentations, or interactive, the flip side play performance, or parent-grandparent workshops, why no means yes to them, and how to bully-proof your child, you can go to confidenceeliminatesbullying.com content, or, excuse me, contact or call Marty at 321-848-4997. But before we send you away, we want you to come in and listen to our conversation because this is a really, really important topic. So before we get started, Marty, tell me a little bit more about yourself and how you became so passionate about eliminating bullying. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show, Tamara. I really appreciate it. Uh, And, you know, there are a couple of reasons that I got started with this. The catapult was, uh, or the catalyst, was one day when I was going across the internet and I bumped into an article about a little girl named Ashlyn Connor, and she was just 10 years old. She was a cheerleader and she was on the honor roll. And that day, instead of going to school to confront that bully one more time, she committed suicide. And I said, enough. Not another bright light of a child needs to be snuffed out. And that day, I founded uh, con- Creating Confident Kids to Eliminate Bullying. I put up a website immediately. And then it's evolved into my nonprofit, Confidence Eliminates Bullying. And, you know, that was also, once I realized that, I I looked at at me and I looked at my life and I realized that for decades I had been bullied and that I knew the pain of that. I knew that pain of, of wondering your value, doubting yourself, wondering, do you matter? And so I could empathize with Ashlyn. And that's the passion that I have, knowing what it's like to feel disregarded, disrespected, left out, not included, put down, called names. And so my passion is that our children believe in themselves because the gift of me being bully is that I've realized that by the more and more confident and secure I am, well, the bully's words don't hurt me anymore because, uh, you know, I know who I am. And so it's really, if it's only when we believe the bully that we're hurt. So when we don't believe the bully, we're not hurt. So if I called you a banana, you wouldn't be upset, right? 
But if I said something that could, I just happen to know something a little vulnerable about you, and I said something, that's when you'd react because you believe it too. But when right. you know who you are, you say, well, that's your opinion. That's not how I see myself. And so by having these kids know how talented, able, and gifted they are, then they can believe in themselves rather than the bully's words and know that they're okay and, and be able to get through their day and be more resilient, more flexible, more adaptable, and be able to, um, to have more joy, more fun, and just be themselves and be great about that. Feel great about it. Well, I wish that you had been around when I was growing up because I I look back and, and I was bullied because think about it. I was overweight and smart. So you put that combination together and I ha- I was called fat brain and I was called moose and I was called a variety of different names. And of course, back then, when I was growing up, we didn't have social media to, to like, you know, put the frosting on the cake. So it was only normally one or two people who would say mean things to me. And of course, as a kid, I could walk away. Or I would always have a friend who would step in and protect me. Um, or I would protect them if they were being bullied. But it was social media, of course, that, that has really changed. When I was looking at your website, confidenceeliminatesbullying.com, what I really noticed that I think is really a, a cool thing that you did is you flip things around, and instead of focusing on bullying, you really put the focus on creating confident kids to eliminate bullying. So how did you decide to spin it from the positive, instead of doing what I see so many people do, where they're just talking about bullying, 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 but they really don't come up with any answers. Yeah. So how did you flip this? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that is the problem that I saw that, the because what I know, because I do my work with entrepreneurs and um, and transforming, as I say, transformation strategists, uh, transforming um, emotions and transforming um, people uh, to see things differently. What I looked at is that the, whatever we focus on grows, whatever we resist persists. So I thought about our leaders, the people who have really turned the tide of history. And there are very few, and they were people like Gandhi, King, Mother Teresa, uh, Mandela. And what they did is if you'll notice, they only focused on what they wanted, not what they didn't want. You know, Mother Teresa famously said, someone said to her, Mother Teresa, come to the war protest. And she said, oh, no, I would never go to a war protest, but I will always go to a peace rally. So when you focus on what you want, you get more of it. So with our children, it's so crucial um, to to see that. And with the anti-bullying, stop bullying, get rid of the bullying, two things are happening. One is we're focusing on exactly what we don't want. So it's increased. It's gone like this. And the other thing is we're actually setting a very poor example because we're actually bullying the bully. We're saying, get out of here, stop, get rid of. They've had protests or walks where children are carrying signs to get rid of the bully. I mean, that if you're the bully, what does that do? It just emboldens them. It just makes them more hurt, more angry. So by, I realized that by focusing on what we want, we could actually stop the, we could actually um, lessen the impact that the bully has on us. And, and knowing personally as a teacher, as a school-based social worker, and personally, that I couldn't stop the bully from saying to me what they said. But when I started to really dig deep and I started to really believe in myself, by knowing how talented, able, and gifted, as I I say, tagging myself for success. I say tag kids for success every day with their talents, their abilities, and their gifts. And when I did that, and I really had to dig deep and really own who I was, the bullies stopped bullying. I never had to say one word to them. They stopped bullying me because that was no longer vulnerable in me. 
I believed in myself. And with that, it, it stopped. And so I realized that it was up to me to believe in me and, and not, you know, as I say, not to be hurt. I'm, I'm not hurt by the bully's words because I know who I am now. And that's what kids are able to do when they say the kid says, you know, you're fat, you know, you're a brain, whatever. And it's you saying, well, there's two things. One is I also teach kids to, to admit the truth. And you could say, yeah, I am. I am very smart and I am heavy. And your point, <laughs> right? You see how you smiled? You yeah. Know, or, you know, like, I know, I like it. You know, I love the way my body feels. Now what's the bully going to say to you? If it's true, it, right. you know, if, if it's true, you, it's like, how can you fight it? Right. So instead of when you fight the bully, you increase it again. What you resist persists. So if you go, yeah. And what's your point? You know, and then the bully's like, uh, uh, you know, I don't they don't know what to say. Right. Because they don't have it. There is it's like, well, that's not fun. Yeah, it's not <laughs> There's fun. no reaction. Exactly. And you could say, yeah, I'm smart enough to know that I'm out of here and walk away, you know. So or if a kid, let's say a kid's carrying a paper and it doesn't have a good mark on it. And the bully says, oh, look at you. You're stupid. You got a D, you know. And the kid says, you know, you're right. I do struggle in math. Can you help me? Right. And what's the bully going to say? But, you know, when we're worried that we we wish we were different. Well, now it's going to trigger that truth in us. And that's when, you know, then we're hurt mm -hmm. rather than saying, yeah, you're right. I do struggle in math. Can you help me? Yeah, so, that's really good. A good tool to use. Yeah, it stops them. You know, I mean, there's always the extreme. There's always and the kids are very, very cruel. And yes, there is the Internet. But even on the Internet, if you don't believe what they're saying about you and if you know that what they're saying is not true, then you hang on to yourself. And with time, and it might take time, which is hard when you're a child, but with time, those people that aren't, aren't really your friends will fall away. But the ones that see you standing for the truth, standing for who you are, um, will be on your team or, or you will be standing alone, but you have you that you like. It's about you liking you. Mm -hmm. That's the only person that actually matters in the long run. Um, and for a kid, that's hard to get to, but, but the truth is, you know who you are. Right. So I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but no. I was just thinking about you you mentioned social media you and and again i i reference you know back in the day when i was little we did not have social media but besides social media what else do you think is causing bullying to i don't know if it's really on the rise or if it's just that we're seeing it um increase or decrease what what do you think is really the cause of all of this um, perception. Is it because we're focusing on the negative instead of the positive? Well, I don't do negative and positive, but. Oh, okay. Because, well, that's just, you know, it is that we are focusing on what we don't want. Okay. It doesn't matter what you do in life, you know, um, when you focus on what you don't want, you get more of it. And so it's, it's really focusing on that. And then also we are more aware. So in the old days, you know, you just had to be tough and, you know, you didn't tell people that people were teasing you, you know, there was that, but nowadays it's out there and kids are so aware of it that they report everything, everything becomes bullying. Um, and, and so it's very hard for the schools because there's so much paperwork when somebody reports bullying. Um, but it's teaching kids what's really a disagreement and a misunderstanding and what is bullying, because it definitely needs to be um, honored when a child feels that they have been um, bullied. And it's because now it's so much that parents, the slightest thing will become bullying. There are two year olds that are being, you know, taken out of preschool because they're bullying rather than teaching them how to negotiate. And this is, this is Tamara, what is my, one of my major pushes or major 
missions is that teachers and administrators don't know how to handle it any different than just get out of here, you're suspended. And that doesn't teach anyone anything. There was um, a, a study done where this person came in and did something different than I do, but close enough to what I do. And the suspension rate, this was for pre-kinder, pre-kindergarten, and the suspension rate went to zero. And it's really teaching teachers to be able to honor and value kids, even when they're being naughty, and parents. You can get cooperation immediately. I'm going to use a home example. Let's say a kid is bouncing on the couch, right? They're just having a good time, and you've told them 200 times not to bounce on the couch, and you've said all sorts of things around it, and you still walk in, and there they are. And what you can do is say, wow, look at how athletic you are. Look at how high you can bounce. Bouncing is for the floor. Now, what you've done is you've seen them for who they are. You've seen them as the athlete. This is their talent, right? You've seen how high they can jump. That's their talent. You could say the athlete is their ability. So you see, ah, look at, look at you being the athlete. Look at how high you can bounce. Now you've complimented them. And then you say, and bouncing is for the floor. And what I have found every time is that the child will cooperate. So by us focusing on what we want, we honor and value their talent, ability, and their gift in that moment. Mm -hmm. And we see them for who they are. They go, wow, somebody saw me for who I am. And they respond. I had 45 kids in front of me one day, and we were outside. You can imagine what that was like. <laughs> and three kids kept spinning away from me. And I said to them, I could have said all the things you'd normally say, go inside, you don't deserve to be here, and all those things. I said, could you three spinning dancers spin your way back over here? And they looked like deer in the headlights. And then they walked right over, and they stood there, and they never moved a muscle the rest of the time. And that's what I want teachers to do and administration to do, is see that the kid is expressing who they are. And to honor that, and when we do that, we get cooperation right away. Helping kids to be able to say, well, that's your opinion. I know who I am. I'm an artist. I'm a singer. I'm a dancer. Uh, I'm a poet. I'm a writer. You know, I know who I am. And those are their talents. And their abilities are creative, inventive, imaginative, smart, um, athletic, flexible, adaptable. So they start to go, oh, I'm flexible, I'm adaptable, I'm smart, um, I'm a scientist. And then the gift that I give the world is that um, I have new ideas to solve problems. Um, my beautiful poem I got to read in front of the class. Um, I gave a performance and my parents were so excited to, to and inspired by what I did. So when kids know that they matter, kids know that they count, they're not going to commit suicide because they know that they matter, that their talents, abilities, and gifts are a gift to our world that matter, and we just need to tell them that. And so by focusing on that, rather than stopping something that's in, that we can't, you can't stop the rain, right? Right. But what you can do is stop the rain of words of the bully from affecting the kids by protecting them, by teaching them how talented, able, and gifted they are. So that's where I see the shift needs to be. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned childhood suicide and ab absenteeism. And one of the goals that you um, mentioned in your website was that you wanted to decrease this by 27% in the next five years by training the teachers and administrators and school staff the behavior management from the inside out, the tag our kids for success, which that's, that is really interesting. And what you've been describing is about some communication techniques that, that can be used to, to help that. So when you actually work with schools and families, what happens, you know, how do these children change in terms of behavior at school and at home, you know, if, if um, obviously nobody wants to see childhood suicide, or how does the absenteeism rate decrease um, when, when people are tagged, I guess? Right. Um, well, thank you for that question. Um, <clears throat> school becomes a safer place 
You see, for over 100,000 children a day, a day don't go to school out of fear of confronting the bully. And 4,400 kids a year, youth a year, commit suicide, and hundreds is due to bullying. So not only is there a huge emotional impact by bullying, but also um, there's also a cost to our school system which is why this is so important to teach teachers how to, how to have classroom management from the inside out so that the classroom is a safer place to be, that the, that the administration is able to handle kids who are, um, who are bullying and being bullied in a way where they don't end up going and being homeschooled. I know of so many situations where the parent's child was bullied and then the bullied child finally stands up for themselves because that's what they've been taught to do. And then that child gets in trouble. The bullied child gets in trouble. And now the parents feel, the child feels betrayed by the school in the first place. Then they're betrayed again by the school because now they're, they're punished rather than the bully. And so um, by the school learning how to manage this differently, being able to teach kids emotional intelligence, teachers to be more emotionally aware of who they are so that their buttons don't get pushed by the bully and by the classroom management problems that come up, the teachers then can support the kids to build their self-esteem, their resiliency, so that they aren't fighting as much. They become confidence boosters rather than fault finders. And when the whole school becomes confidence boosters rather than fault finders and looking to punish and get the child out of there and to spend the child from school, instead of that, finding a way to have them um, mentor and communicate more effectively, then we can keep our kids in the school, which means the kids, the school gets the money every day, $40. I mean, a three-day suspension costs over $250 to the school, just three days. You have the $40 a day for the kid not being there. You have administration costs. You have the stress and strain on the family and the teacher. So it costs that way and also emotionally. Um, so by teachers, it, the results have shown that um, school attendance goes up and that children at home behave better. In fact, Tamara, I am going to Uganda um, in um at the end of February and into March. And our program's been there for three years. And those are the results that they're seeing with thousands of children. I'm gonna meet with 5,000 kids and 1,000 parents and teachers. And they are already seeing the results of this program where they are seeing the school attendance going up and that parents have actually come into the school and thank them because their children are cooperating at home better. So once they start to learn how talented, able, and gifted they are, they believe in themselves, they do better at school, they're more resilient and adaptable, and therefore they're cooperating more at home. And when parents are tagging them by, wow, look at how high you can jump, rather than, you know, you go to your room and I told you not to destroy my couch and look at what you've done to our family and having the kid feel this big when they finish their conversation instead of like, wow, mom saw me for who I am. I'm an athlete. And mm -hmm. now I'll cooperate because now mom's on my team. And when we can develop that more and more, so it becomes normal. Um, and that we're looking to, to tag kids for success with, wow, look at how you set the table tonight. You know how to, you know how to decorate, you know, um, the way you chop the vegetables, you solve the problem of getting dinner ready on time. And you start to talk that way to the child. Well, now you're going to get them cooperating with you more and having more fun, more time for mom, more time for dad to enjoy life. And that works as with adults also. Everybody, no matter how old they are, want to be acknowledged for the little things. Uh, I have grown sons and they really appreciate it when I acknowledge, when, like if they cook dinner or do something special, they really like it when I actually say, wow, the way you cooked that, you know, steak was really awesome or whatever they did, you know, they appreciate that. And I think that's everyone appreciates being acknowledged for all of the positive things. So 
tag for change movement, you've got it very well established in Africa, in Uganda and Tanzania, and then also here in the United States. So how did you end up um, having it go into Africa? Well, that's a story. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, you know, how life works. Like I'm bumping into the article about Ashlyn Connor on the internet. How did that happen? It just happened, right? And so one day I got an email from a man named Pastor Booney Alex. And he said, I found your book in the garbage in Uganda here. And I want to know more about what you do. And that was three years ago. And since then, I have trained him and coached him and taught him um, about our program over the internet and sent him, you know, tr teacher training manuals and um, given him um, supplies and things that he could use. And he has reached people throughout um, all of, I'm going to seven re regions of Uganda, and he's been into Tanzania, worked with a Maasai tribe. So he has taken this word. I mean, what a serendipitous experience that, I mean, how did that happen? I mean, like, oh my goodness. And it's so fabulous. And now we're going. Christina um, Stewart, who's a photojournalist, is coming with me. And so she's going to be filming it. So we'll be able to bring it back and we'll be able to share it with people and spread the word about, about the Tag for Change movement. Um, we're going to be doing a fundraiser coming up. Um, and we'd love to have everyone tag their kid for success. So we're going to have people do a video of their kid expressing their talents, abilities, and gifts, like reading a poem or dancing, dancing or throwing a, a football or whatever it is that they, how they express, building blocks, cooking dinner, whatever is their expression. And then they can make a contribution of whatever size and put it up and post it. And then we're going to have a drawing at the end. Um, and uh, so that people will get, you know, gifts and thanking them for, for um, sharing how their child is a gift to the world. Um, so we're really excited about that. And, and we also wanted to honor and value the children that have decided to leave. And so we're doing in memoriam. So if a child, um, you know, to put up pictures in remembrance of a child and the gift that they were to the world, because their memory still goes on and their gift of who they were is still with us. So we want to also honor and value them as well. So we're excited about um, going to Africa, being able to, I'm going to be meeting with the deputy of education over there to see about getting our program further into the school system and uh, to see how we can continue this relationship and build it, um, as well as work with the women on um, starting uh, their businesses, because that's a way for them to not be bullied as well. Because obviously, as adults, we're, we can be bullied. And right. so for them to have their own businesses, to, that's a new concept for this community, that the women could have their own businesses, to be an entrepreneur. Um, so we'll be doing that as well as a way to stop the generational passing down the way in which we see men and women, but to shift that. And so by doing that and, and husbands and wives getting along better um, and setting an example for the children, this is all interwoven into eliminating bullying around the world. Wow. So isn't that amazing how just like you said, you spread an article about a young girl who committed suicide because of bullying and you had this idea and now look, you're headed to Africa to meet with, you said 5,000 students and a thousand parents can, I mean, think about that. That's a large amount of people and every one of those people who get tagged for success. Can you imagine Every one person, if they understand how valuable they are and then they how it just expands from that, every person and just that group in Africa, how much that can expand or every, even in the small classrooms here, you know, how one person whose life is improved and then that can improve everyone they touch because of their self-esteem is so much better. Wow. Yeah, that's really phenomenal. I wanted to ask you a little bit um, more about children who bully. 
because we, you know, the, we, it always seems like we have the victim, think about the victim, but, but children who do the bullying, isn't there normally an underlying reason or, or, or how do we, you know, work on both sides of this issue in that, in that positive way of trying to address both sides so that we can really, like you said, confidence eliminates bullying on both sides of the issue. Yeah, thank you. Um, you know, when I was a school-based social worker, I, I started a mentoring program. And what I did is I made the bully the mentor. And when I made the bully the mentor, the discipline problem dropped. You see, the bully is the warrior personality type. And the underdeveloped warrior is the bully, but the developed warrior is the hero. So what we do is we want to evolve them, help them to grow, help them to develop into the leader and the hero that they actually want to be. But the warrior personality type comes from a place in this world of feeling that the world is against them, that the world feels like a threat to them. And in order for them to survive, what they do is they are aggressive first so that people won't aggress on them. So they push everybody away and they're, and they're aggressive because that's their way to stay safe or they believe that will keep them safe. And so when we can have compassion for that, when we can have understanding that they come from a place of feeling threatened and we help them to develop the emotional intelligence to understand how to take care of themselves, how to honor and value who they are, to see that they really want to be that hero and help them to develop that leadership that can lead people to gangs and drugs and all those things that can go that way. But to take that leadership ability and say, well, let's redirect that into this and see about you creating um, a group of people that is bringing about change in the world to help your community. How could you develop that? You've been listening to Women Innovators with Tammy Patzer. To learn more, please go to womeninnovatorsradio.com. And please do subscribe and share to spread the big messages and big missions to change the world.